Welcome back to my channel. I am Helen of Helen Phelan Studio, and today is a doozy. It's a long one. It's 45 minutes, and I'm using a yoga block. You could substitute in a throw pillow or maybe a, a big textbook if you have like a dictionary, something like that at home. That way you can use it for some of that feedback that we get from the block in the video. And it's completely low impact, so not a lot of stress on the joints. It's a bit quieter, and you can take it at whatever pace feels right for you. I hope you have fun. I hope you get a little sweaty. I hope you feel your abs. And if you do feel all those things, if you do have a good time, please subscribe, like, comment, all of that so that I can keep making more videos for you. And if you really like it, you can find me over on the membership platform, Helen Feelin Studio. I'll see you on the mat. Hello and welcome back to Helen Feelin Studio. Today we are doing our low impact cardio Pilates using just a yoga block, or you could use a pillow instead if you don't have a block. And we're gonna get started laying all the way down on our backs. Going into, again, repeating a similar type of flow from the other classes that we've done this week, but a little bit of a, of a riff on them. So I'm gonna take the block to the front of the thighs today. Knees come up to tabletop. Hands are side by side on the front of that block. Without tucking your pelvis, you're gonna curl up, press into the block, look in at your belly button, and then inhale, lower your head and chest back down. Exhale, curl up, shoulder blades try to leave the ground, and inhale, take it back. Same thing, pressing through those hands and inhaling back to the ground. And down, keep both hips weighted into the floor. And try to feel that really deep in your abs by giving it an extra squeeze, even more of a press each time you curl up. Inhaling right back down. We're here for two. And one, now keep your head and chest down. You're gonna do the same thing, but it's a lot smaller. We're just tucking the pelvis and untucking the pelvis. So really, really tiny. Still pressing through my hands as I tuck the pelvis and then softening. Exhale, tucking through that tailbone under, trying to squeeze into the block and then inhaling to release it. Just a few more. Big exhale all the way out and then inhale all the way in, taking it just a little bit slower than you might want to. And inhaling in one more time, we're gonna combine that all together. So this time you're gonna tuck your pelvis and curl up your head and chest and hold. Exhale. Now squeeze into that block for dear life, unshrug the shoulders, gazing in at the belly button, gazing in at the pubic bone, Push a little harder with your arms. You should feel the backs of your arms working here as well. Shoulder blades come off the ground just a little bit. We've got a few more seconds here. <sighs> Quickest way to wake up the abs. <sighs> got a lot of balance stuff happening throughout our cardio sequencing. So we want those core muscles to be alive and well. Give me another few deep breaths. Push harder through that block. Curl up one more inch for 10. One more inch for 10, nine, eight seven, curl up higher, six, five, squeeze that block, four, three, two, and one, hug the knees in. Little gentle rock from side to side. All right, so now the block is gonna come to the right thigh only. Right hand is on the block, pushing just like normal, or just like we did before, and left arm is going up to the ceiling. You're gonna squeeze into your block, reach the left leg front, the right, sorry, the left arm back. So we're doing same arm, same leg. Exhale, arm reach is, reaches in opposite direction of the leg. Inhale, bringing it back in. Squeezing through that block as you do so. And I know it's really tempting to shift to one hip versus the other, but try to keep both hips evenly weighted down and into the ground. Inhaling back to the top. Still lighting up through the triceps of that arm that is touching the block or pillow, if that's what you're working with. And the more you press through the hand on that block, the more intense you'll feel it all over, not just in the shoulders and triceps, but even through the obliques. We have two more. We're gonna add a curl for some coordination. 
So this time, as I bring the arm and the leg in, I reach that top arm forward. I try to squeeze into the block for the curl. My left hand is right here by my left butt cheek here. And then inhale, open it up, but give me more tension on that block. Exhale, curl. No twisting in the upper body. Inhale, open. It's three. Two. Arms should want to fall off at the end of this. And one, hold it up, little pulses forward. I'm squeezing into the block as I reach through the fingertips, lifting evenly on both sides for three, two, one. Rest it down for a second. Right arm should feel like jelly, letting it relax, letting it go. Little rock of your body into the floor. And let's get right into side two. Let's get it over with. Arm, right arm up to the ceiling. As you exhale, wrap those ribs together, slide your rib cage down to reach the arm and leg in opposite directions, and then inhale back to the top. Now I'm aiming to get my arm as far back as I can with one caveat. I wanna make sure I'm not shrugging my shoulder as I reach it back or floating my ribs off the ground. So keep your upper back connected to the floor. Maybe you need to bend that right arm a little bit more. Maybe you need to make the range of motion a little bit smaller. I want you to play with it to make it your own so that your body is getting the absolute most out of this rather than trying to contort into a position that doesn't feel productive. Taking it a little bit slower each time so you can really enjoy that squeeze of the block. Last two, we're gonna add our curl. That squeeze is still going strong through my left hand. Can you even press back into the block with your left thigh? Get a little more into those obliques. Now this time I curl up, reach the right arm forward like someone's pulling my wrist front, squeeze through that block with the left hand. Inhale, open it right back up. Exhale, curling up, no shoulder blades on the ground. Inhale, opening it up on that reach in opposition. You can also do this without the curl, keeping your spine in neutral the whole time, totally fine. <sighs> Two more. We are gonna hold it at the top, of course, and bring it all the way up, little pulses at the top, squeeze your block as you reach through the fingertips, so good. It's three, two, and one. Oh, relax it down, hug those knees in. Shake out that left arm if you need it. Little rocks from side to side. One more thing here before I get you up when we start talking about cardio. All right, so block right back to the beginning on both thighs like we started, but I'm gonna be switching from lap to sides of the block. So as I curl up, my hands are on my lap, they're on the front of the block, that's an exhale. I'm not tucking my pelvis under here, I'm remaining neutral. Curl up, press into it, then lower your head and chest, reach the block back behind you with hands on either side of the block. Curl up, squeeze into it, join me when you're ready, and inhale reach it out. The lower I reach those legs, the trickier it gets. So if you are feeling like today's the day you need more support, legs go higher. If you're feeling like you want a little more spice, legs go lower. Another option for more support is taking it to just one leg at a time and just alternating or keeping your legs in tabletop the entire time. Totally fine. I want you, like I said, to really personalize that movement so that it feels challenging, but it feels sustainable. <sighs> Shoulder blades come off the ground each time. Maybe linger a little bit longer at the top for good luck, for a little extra intensity, a little extra shakiness in those abs. <sighs> Inhale as we open it up. Two more. <sighs> Exhale as we crunch and lift up, squeezing that block. Last time, I'm gonna hold it in that crunch, squeeze into the block, not pulsing with my upper body, just pulsing with my arms. Exhale, squeeze into the block and release. Squeeze into the block and release. Can be done with the head down if you prefer. Just make sure those shoulders are not shrugging up into the ears. For three, two, and one. Relax it all the way down. Knees will windshield wiper side to side. Block goes away from you for just a moment. We take our favorite supine twist stretch and my right knee is hugging all the way into my chest. 
and I'm gonna let it cross over the left side of the body while keeping that right shoulder really grounded to the floor. Imagining that I have someone pressing down my right shoulder so that I get this nice oppositional reaching traction. Give yourself one more moment. We're heading into our first interval of cardio after we finish up this stretch. Come back through the center and let's take it to the second side, left knee into the chest. Swirl it around a little and then take it over to the opposite side of the body, keeping that left shoulder on the ground here. And we're gonna do three moves during cardio. We're gonna do the whole cardio flow four times total, but we're breaking it up into little chunks of two. So really, really manageable, challenging, but manageable. And we're gonna go ahead and come on up. So get yourself up to standing, however feels doable. And we're gonna talk about the moves. So our first move is a little sort of skater with the block. I'm gonna start with the block in my hand. Start in either a curtsy lunge so that that back foot is on the floor or start in a little balance. That's, that's gonna involve a little bit more core if your right foot, your back foot is off the ground. And then it's just a step. Step, so I have the option of putting that back foot, planting it on the ground for a skater jump across the mat. You can even jump or take a big step, rather not jump since it's low impact cardio technically. But I also wanna think about spiraling with that upper body. So especially if I'm floating in that spiral, it should feel just like a bicycle crunch every single time you land, which means that you probably wanna take it a little bit on the slower side in the beginning. All right, move two. I'm coming out to a plie squat. Knees and toes are facing opposite directions. You're gonna sink down all the way low. Reach the block right out in front of your sternum. Knees don't move, you just twist and twist. So really it's rib cage doing the twist, not pelvis doing the twist. A lot harder than it looks, so you can always modify up to standing at any point if your legs are on fire, but we kinda want them to be on fire, right? So stay with me. Last one is coming into your tabletop position. Block is just on the hips to make sure that we're not moving our pelvis. Knees tuck up, or toes tuck under, knees float up, and it's opposite shoulder taps. For speed, but not so much that we're wiggling at the hips. Okay, all good on all those? <laughs> we'll find out, right? All right, let me make sure I can see my timer. And... Let's go ahead and get started. Start in your curtsy. Big twist with that, with the arms over towards the front leg. We're gonna jump over to the side. 40 seconds of work in two and one 40 seconds. Jump and twist, jump and twist, or step, twist, step, twist. I want it to feel, like I said, manageable, challenging, but manageable. And more than anything, I wanna feel that connection to those abdominals. That's why I just gave you such an intense core wor warm up. If you wanna scale that up, take it to the balance. Woo. And it's gonna be wobbly. It's not gonna be necessarily the prettiest move you've ever done. But that's not really what it's about, right? It's about the core connection, that's what it's about. Almost there. Last five seconds. Last one, bring it all the way up. Lots of twisting today, right? Come back up into your standing position, knees and toes facing an external rotation. Let's sink it all the way down into your deepest plie squat. Weight in the pinky toes, really turning out your thighs. Arms in front of us, 40 seconds. Simple twist. The trickiest thing is not to let the knees do what they wanna do, so you can always come up a little higher. You could always straighten the legs, but isolate above the waistline, upper body only. It is my shoulders and my ribs that are twisting, not my arms. This is very different. This is rock by baby. This is spinal rotation. That's what we want. Maybe get a little bit lower. Come on, it feels good. Dropping your pelvis heavy to the floor. 
Good control, Julia. Make sure you're breathing. Keep pressing through those pinky toes. It's four, three, two, and one. Step it up tall. Give your hips a little shift from side to side. Down to your knee hover. So, I want you to go as fast as you can with those shoulder taps. Try not to wiggle your butt. Another modification here is keeping your knees on the floor. That's totally fine with me too. Let's get those knees up. If you choose, tuck under. Pull the shoulder blades away from the ears. 40 seconds begins now. Let's go. And I want you to really, again, tune in to what's happening in your abdominals. Chances are, as you remove one arm, you feel that side of your waist react. And I just want to pay attention to that because the more we're aware of that space, the more we can use it to help us stabilize. About 20 more seconds here. Make sure you're breathing. And if you are floating up in that knee hover, your knees are still close to the floor. We're not letting our butt get higher than our shoulders, or at least we're trying. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Ooh, let that go. Sit it down for a second. Shake out the hands. Let the wrists let go of any tension. Shoulders roll up, around, and back. We are gonna do it one more time for now. I told you we're gonna do two chunks. So finishing up that first chunk, start on the opposite side of your mat. Decide right now, are you gonna do it with the balance or are you gonna plant that back foot? Either way, really spiraling that upper body, really important. All right, we get started in three, two, and one. Jump or step, catch yourself, jump or step. Catch yourself. I'm doing a little reaching action with the block. I find that that's helping me find my balance, but I re don't really mind what the block is doing here. As long as you're moving, as long as you're using your core, as long as you're catching yourself. Stay with it. Can you take up a little more space on that mat? Get all the way to the side of your mat all the way to the opposite side. Last 10 seconds. Breathe, breathe, breathe. And last time. Step it on up. Come back to the center of your mat. Knees and toes facing wide. Not too much recovery. Sink it down into your plie. Just twist. Now it really helps if you choose a spot in either corner of the room, you're looking from right to left. Rather than letting your focus wander, that's what's gonna make you dizzy. Spot, spot. Alternatively, you can keep your focus forward as long as you're still making sure that the ribs are moving. It cannot be just those arms. Sink your hips down a little lower, we're almost there. I want you to feel the side body on each rotation. Roll your shoulders down and back. Give me 10 more seconds. Drop it low, low, low. Press those knees wide, wide, wide. It's three, Ooh. two, and one. Step it back upright. Down to that knee hover. Last time for now. Should be feeling a little sweaty. Block to that tailbone area. Tuck the toes under. Optional knee float up. Shoulder taps, 40 seconds. Let's get after it. We're looking for some speed here, but not at the expense of our form, so keep those hips low. Keep your shoulders away from your ears. Try not to round your spine like an angry cat. Keep your chest open, proud posture. Hug the belly button in each time the hand leaves the ground. And don't let those hips shift. Almost there, just 20 more seconds. Stay with me, keep your weight a little more forward. Press through your knuckles each time. We have soft elbows. Just 10 more seconds. Last three, two, and one. Holy moly, we rest it down. Okay, changing mindsets for a little bit. We just did two rounds of cardio. We are gonna do it two more times, but not till after we do a little lower body work. So my block is now gonna transition into a pillow. I'm gonna lay down with my right ear 
on the block, my bottom leg bent, and I'm using that block to help me feel my shoulders stacked on top of one another. I don't want to collapse it like this. I want to imagine my body's in between two panes of glass, and that's going to help remind me if I feel like I'm twisting forward, that I'm going to knock my shoulder or my back into that pane of glass, all right? So hugging the rib cage up and in, top leg finds hip height, you know this one, little lift up an inch and down an inch. Really small and controlled. This gets harder when we think about making it harder. So you have to stay focused. Think about pushing that leg up for each of these reaches. Like you have a heavy ankle weight on your leg or like someone's trying to push it down as you lift it up. Make sure that you're breathing through it. I'm also trying to reach my leg a little bit longer. Find that connection to your core. You should feel more support, more connection as you lift up because not only is that gonna make your butt work harder, you're squeezing your butt with that support from your spine, but it makes it more of a full body exercise. Lots of stuff happening here. Let's go two and one. Keep that leg lifted at hip height. Don't let it droop down. Start to sweep it forward any amount as long as you're not tucking your tailbone under. So stick, keep sticking your tailbone out the opposite direction and then sweep it back. I'm trying to get my heel to dig into the wall here without tipping my pelvis forward. So if you're not close to a wall, I want you to just create a sensation imagining that you're pushing a wall away from you. In fact, you can even press your leg back further than I am. I would love that. You get even more hip extension. But I want you to recreate that sensation of pushing up against something so that we light up the back of the leg just as much as that side of the leg. And we give the front of our leg a little release, a little, a little extra love. Inhaling as that leg goes forward and exhaling to push it away from you. I also really love doing this up against the wall for these leg lifts that we started with. Because if you work on keeping your back up against the wall and your heel up against the wall, it's a really great way to help you train that alignment. I talk about that a little bit more in my tutorial about setting up for side lying, which this is a side lying glute exercise for obvious reasons. So if you're looking to play with your alignment a little bit there, that's a good video in the tutorial section. Inhaling forward, nice clean hinge at the hip, exhaling back, exposing this hip flexor, letting it stretch, squeezing through the, the butt cheek, squeezing through the gluteal fold, digging that wall away from you. Last time. Now I want to keep the heel lined up with my butt cheek, so I'm standing right on it. Reach out through that leg a little bit more. It's just a circle. So this top hand, you can do whatever you like with it. If it's on the floor, like I said, don't twist into it. But I always think it's nice to check in with the body every now and then. Where do you feel it? Hopefully this outer butt area. Hopefully this low ab area. Hopefully not your low back. All right, we want to keep that length, that reaching, that pushing outward to help expand and create space for that low back. Reverse it. And now really imagine you have those ankle weights on. How brutal is that? If you've taken my weighted workouts classes, you know it's, it's not the most fun, but it also is at the same time, depending on your headspace that day. But you're more than welcome to throw on some ankle weights next time you do this class on replay. Always welcome, you know? Last time. And pause, keep that leg up there, keep it right at hip height, but reach it out a little bit further. Really push out through the heel. That should light up deep in this side hip. Hug your waistline up and in a little bit more. Roll your top shoulder open and back, and then rest it all the way down. Take a little love tap. Just massage it out. Then lift yourself up. Nice, smooth, quick transition to the second side. So you know the drill already. Left, left ear to the block. Block is serving as the pillow, or maybe your act actual pillow is serving as a pillow. And my top leg is extended. My bottom leg is bent. That helps with my balance. <sighs> Hip height. Exhale, lifting up an inch and down an inch. <sighs> up an inch and down an inch. <sighs> so after we finish up this leg, just to give you some insight to what's on deck, <sighs> we are going back to cardio, doing it twice more. So just another round through of what we already did. <sighs> then we're going to hit some posture work, some planks, 
and then it's TGIF. Reaching the leg all the way out on that diagonal. Someone's pulling your ankle out of the hip socket, preventing this action from happening. We don't want any bobbing at the hips. I'm trying to keep my leg hip height lowest so I really feel the tension building in this outer hip. Give me another four. Three, two, relax the shoulders. One, keep that leg lifted right at hip height. Sweep it forward as far as you can, just don't tuck your tail. Sweep it back as far as you can, just don't arch your back. And I'm really thinking about that wall or imaginary wall as I squeeze to press back, that gluteal fold squeezing on that reach, reach back. Inhale front, watch out what's happening in this torso. So I don't want to compensate here. And also in my hip, I wanna make sure that my hips are not moving. And I don't wanna compensate here. What that ends up being is a lot of movement of the back instead of stability through the center, which is gonna make your butt do the work and probably stress out. It'll probably stress out your back if you do it the other way. So no one likes that. Squeeze that wall away from you each time. Inhale on the forward. That also means your leg does not have to kick super far front. My hamstrings are pretty flexible. So I'm able to get a big kick without starting to cheat into my back. But you don't need to do that to get everything out of the exercise. That's just what works on my body. You could also bend the knee just a little bit as it comes forward to help take some tension off of the hip flexors. One more time. Line that heel up with your butt cheek. Make sure, at hip, make sure it's at hip height minimum. Lift up and around. Keep those hips stacked on top of one another. Roll that shoulder down and back away from your ears. Keep reaching out through that heel. Make sure you're breathing. Now's the time to remember to relax the face, relax the, necks, relax the neck and shoulders, and reverse that circle other way. Totally normal if one side feels a little more intense than the other. The more we do this, the more connected we feel to both sides, the less obvious that imbalance feels. Last two. And one, reach it all the way out, hold it, hold it, hold it. Relax that top shoulder, keep reaching out through the heel. This is active, we're not just hanging out here. I'm pushing that foot out of my hip. One more deep breath. And then relax it all the way down. Little love taps once again. Okay, I'm not gonna give you a stretch for those hips yet. We're gonna do it after this next cardio. So I want you to come on up, back to your standing position. All good? Okay. Probably gonna be a little more fatigued this time around because we just got really deep into those hips. So totally fine with me if you take that side to side lateral jump a little bit slower. I'm always, always up for a modification. So we get started. Last two rounds we ever do this. So last time we're starting on this side of the mat. Give me a nice deep twist really rotate with the upper body. I wanna imagine almost like rotating so much that I'm spinning around. That's where the energy is, is going, like a tornado. And we get started right now, 40 seconds. Jump or step to reach, jump or step to reach. Woo. Now, if you wanna give that balance a little challenge, a little try, like I said, just expect that it's gonna be a little wobbly. It's not gonna be <laughs> picture perfect but you also won't know if you can do it until you try it. So we gotta get comfortable with being a little messy. Just about 10 more seconds here. And maybe you go for that balance and sometimes you have to catch yourself with that back foot down. Last time to the right. Bring it all the way up. Come through the center, feet a little bit wider than the hips, we get down. I want you to get lower this time than you have been yet today. So really drop the pelvis down, press those knees wide. Let's twist 40 seconds. Make sure that it's the ribs twisting. So if you need to, bring your hands to your shoulders and get that twist to happen from your trunk. Find a place to spot, corner, 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 corner. Don't let your eyes wander. That's when we get dizzy. 
or like I said, option to keep your focus center as long as you're able to maintain the rotation of the actual spine and not just little chicken dance arms. That's another class. Less than 10 seconds. Make sure you're breathing. After this, just one more time through. Last one. And step it up. Shoulder taps from our knee hover. Bring it down. Block comes to that tailbone area. If you're feeling like you're the most stable in the world and you really want to challenge yourself, you can take your block up to that higher level. It's more precarious. Or even, if you're feeling really bold, this one. I'm going to stick with that like medium one, see how that feels. Totally up to you. You can leave it in the flat side if you want. Come on up, float those knees. 40 seconds. Make sure you're breathing. Keep your knees close to the ground. The whole purpose of the block here is to help you be your own teacher. I talked about this on Instagram this week. It helps you know if your hips are moving because we're not always the most aware, especially in cardio. Pilates really lends itself more to that, that slowing down, that mindfulness. But I find that the second we pick up the pace, that goes out the window. So this is a good way to just, see, there we go, to, to just make sure that it doesn't go completely out the window. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Resting it all the way down. Take those hands behind your back. Lift your heart up. Let the chest open. Oh, okay. Are we ready to do that one final time before we move back into Pilates? So step on up. Come over to the opposite side of your mat. I want you to try a few of those balances this time if you haven't giving yourself a moment to, to figure it out there, just try it once or twice, once on each side, and see if it's worth exploring further from there. Deep into that twist, we get started in two, and one, hop or step, hop or step. <sighs> Balance or curtsy. <sighs> breathe, breathe, breathe. Just 20 seconds to go here. <sighs> Clear that entire mat. Try to get all the way from side to side, working that side body the same way that we did with all those leg lifts. <sighs> 10 more seconds. <sighs> Last time you ever have to do these. <sighs> Enjoy that. Last time. <sighs> and bring it all the way up. Knees and toes, opposite sides of the room. Last round ever of these plies. We get as low as humanly possible here. Press those thighs wide, wide, wide. Let's twist, let's do it. Breathing, breathing, breathing. Sink those hips a little lower. Good, relax those shoulders. Little gentle squeeze into the block, but nothing crazy. Get even lower. Just 20 more seconds here. The last 20 seconds of twisting, we sink those hips down, we keep them down. 15 more seconds. We can do this. Hips don't rotate, ribs do. Last five. Low, 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 drop those hips for three, two, and one. Ah! Lift it all the way up. Ah, little love taps to those quads if you need them. Last and final time, down on the floor. Choose which level you want this block at. Wobbly, wobblier, wobbliest, all right? <sighs> Float the knees up. We get started in two. And one shoulder tap <sighs> with as little movement in those knees as possible, in those hips as possible. Bracing through the core even more than you think you can. <sighs> 20 seconds down, 20 to go. Keep those knees close to the floor. Shift your weight forward into your knuckles, into your fingertips. Unshrug those shoulders. Slow it down if you feel that block wobbling. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Last four. Three, two, one. Hallelujah, we get it down. Lose that block for a moment. Take it out in front of you. Separate your knees super wide. Sit it back into a child's pose. Arms reach all the way forward. 
and we recover. Okay, not too shabby. Hands reaching as far for forward, as far forward as you can, pushing through the ground and trying to breathe through the back ribs as you pull your ribs in the opposite direction. Exhale to soften. Inhale to breathe through that back body and feel that stretch all around the upper back, all around the sides of the ribs. You're gonna bring yourself back up to all fours, tuck your toes under, find your downward facing dog. Give yourself a moment to pedal side to side here. And then when you're ready, float the right leg up. Try to keep your hips square so I'm not opening at my hips. Hips stay square. You can circle at your ankle a few times. Really let that left heel sink to the floor. And then take your right knee, cross your right ankle, sorry, cross it in front of your left thigh, and you're just gonna sit it back into your figure four stretch. So this is a bit of a funky figure four. If you prefer to do the laying down version, that's also totally fine. But either way, I'm working on pressing my right knee forward or actually towards the back leg, I guess. I guess in this instance, it's backward <laughs> from the direction that you're facing, but trying to get more external rotation of your right knee rather than letting it pull forward, pressing it back. Then untangle, reach it back up to the sky. <sighs> Take it down to the floor. Left leg is gonna float up. Keep pressing down through that right heel. Hips are nice and square. Ribs are knit together and closed. And then we're gonna go ahead and take that left ankle, cross it over that right thigh and sit it back a bit, trying to really press the left knee forward. <sighs> Increasing that turn of the left leg, getting the left hip to stretch, sliding those shoulders away from the ears, taking one last deep breath, Reaching left leg back up to the sky. Keep those ribs closed before lowering two feet to the floor. Rise up to your tippy toes, curl through your tail. Nice feel good transition through your plank and then control that descent down to the floor. So we're gonna get into a little more posture stuff. Our block should be right where we left it. I want you to take that block behind your back. Now my goal for this is to keep blade hands the whole time. So. If that means you need to drop the block and just use an imaginary block instead, I'm totally happy with that. But I wanna try and avoid doing, avoid doing these like claw hands because you're just not using your arms as much. All right, so really simple, blade hands, press your pubic bone through the floor, squeeze between those shoulder blades, exhale, rise up, and inhale, take it back down. This one is definitely harder than it looks. Really, really tough on everything in our posterior chain. That space between the shoulder blades, the backs of the arms, really opening at the chest as well. Remember, it's that same exact movement. I'm thinking about reaching the block or my fingertips towards my toes as I lift. We should be really tired at the end of this. Last two, squeezing as we lift. And one, squeezing as we lift. Stay up there, give me little squeezes into that block for five. Four, three, two, one, softening it all the way down. Give yourself a little shift from side to side. We're gonna add another layer onto that. We wanna make sure that we have enough room in front of us to be able to fully extend our arms. We start with the arms behind the back, forehead facing the ground. Reach those arms all the way towards your toes. Lift all the way up, stay. Take the block in the right hand only. Reach it in front of you. Keep the shoulders soft and maybe bend the elbows to keep you from shrugging. Take it to the left hand, pass it behind you, pause. Squeeze that block for dear life once again. Now take it in your left hand. Grab it with the left hand, reach it forward. No shrugging through those shoulders. Take it back to the right. Each time we're behind the body, we pause to give it a little extra squeeze into those triceps. Changing directions each time, just to keep it interesting. And I want that pass back to be also another extra little reach. Remember to blade those hands. <sighs> really opening at the chest. <sighs> I've done this so many times this week. <sighs> so <laughs> I'm definitely feeling <sighs> my triceps and my upper back. 
but it's a really nice sensation because we don't really work those muscles in our everyday life. So it's tough, it is not easy, but it's really nice to feel that balance, as well as this really nice opening of our pecs. Can you squeeze that block a little bit more? I wanna take this last time to the right, squeeze that block, or that imaginary block. Last time left, squeeze that block, hold it, little pulses up with the arms, as straight as you can get through those elbows. Keep driving your pubic bone through the floor, squeeze that block for four, three, two, and one, melt it down. That is not easy. Let's just take the block to the side for a moment. Push yourself back up to your all fours position. Once again, giving yourself a little stretch through the wrists, flipping the palms towards you and flipping the palms away. We're gonna to start to plank it out a bit to take us all the way to the end. So you're gonna take that block into the inner thighs. Siri always wants to talk to me anytime we plank because she's getting pressed into my wrist. Okay, so tucking your toes under, float the knees up, find your down dog, enjoy. So my shoulders are sliding away from the ears. I'm trying to flatten out through my spine, even if that means I need to bend my knees just like before. And then you're gonna rock yourself forward like a rocket launcher here, squeezing your glutes, squeezing into the block. This can also be done here on the knees. So two options, if you're here on the knees, sit back into a squat, keep the toes tucked under, and press it forward, squeeze the block for dear, dear life. Option two, from straight legs, sitting into a squat and coming forward. And both of those, I wanna make sure I'm not shrugging at my shoulders. So she'll slide those shoulders away from your ears. Inhaling on the back, relax your pelvic floor, maybe give your sits bones a little wiggle. And then exhale, engage it all nice and deeply in. Inhaling back, exhaling forward. Last two. Last one, this time we hold the plank, stay there, squeeze through that block. Bring your chest a little more forward. Bring the back of your head to the sky. It's five, four, three, two, and one. Butt to the ceiling. Let your heels just sink down here. They don't have to touch the ground. Let gravity do its thing. We're gonna do a really similar, similar plank, but we're going from down dog to plank instead of squat to plank. So that's gonna look like down dog, roll through the spine, plank. Down dog. Or roll through the 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 down dog, roll into the plank on the knees. So you're just gonna really control placing those knees down if you're looking for more support today. Exhale, hugging it back up. Now watch my ankles here. I'm gonna dig my heels down, rise up to the tippy toes. See how C curved I am in the spine? Undulate forward. Optional, put those knees down. Squeeze the block for a moment here. And now stick your butt out, rise up to the tippy toes. Dig the heels down again. So there's a little extra calf raise in there so that we are giving that lower body a little love through the Achilles, especially if you chose some of those jumps today in our cardio portion. <sighs> Allowing that back ankle, back calf area <sighs> to recover. Let's take that two more times. Tippy toes, undulating forward. Make that C curve happen. But when you find plank, show me your collarbones. And dig through those heels undulate this I want to be the most important part that transition last time we're gonna come into our plank whether it's knees or toes we hold it for 10 strong seconds opening it back up squeezing through those glutes for 10 9 press through the knuckles lift up taller at the chest use your armpits to grow taller shift your weight forward slightly just three two squeeze that block one, set the knees down. Whew. That was quite a bit. Sit it back onto your bottom. Let's take the hands behind the back. Glue those palms together. And now open up at the collarbones and really reach your arms behind you just like we did with the block, except this interlocking of the fingers makes it a little, a little nicer on those triceps. We finish with a little head circle in each direction. And then some shoulder rolls, and that's that. 
If you have any questions about class, feel free to drop a comment below. I'm happy to answer anything in the comments or in our Mighty Networks group. And I can't wait to move with you again soon.